Hello and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be replacing our old Samsung 25R pack with this new Samsung 30Q 10S 4P pack that we are currently selling on our online store, Propulsion Boards. So let's check this pack out before we install it. We designed this pack very specifically to have the key features that we wanted. It has an XT90, a power switch, a charge port, and an LCD percentage indicator. It's really skinny, but that also means that it's very long at just around 19 and a half inches. The switch completely controls the battery, so when you turn it on, the pack will turn the BMS off, and when you turn it off, the BMS will be off. So we're going to be installing this in our most popular ever YouTube video build ever, which is sitting on 80k views right now. Currently, it's using a Samsung 10S 4P 25R pack. The enclosure combination with that is also not too clean, and we just wanted a little bit more range with the upgraded cells. The enclosure that we used on this build when we first made it was homemade from a piece of ABS plastic and a heat gun. So it obviously didn't turn out too great. The enclosure holes are also starting to wear down and allow debris into the enclosure. So what we're going to be doing is changing this enclosure to a new enclosure from West Coast Standard, which is going to make this build look super nice and fit the pack perfectly. So this is the fishbone enclosure. It's the longest single piece enclosure that West Coast Standard sells, and it's absolutely perfect for this application because it's made for a really long battery such as the 10S 4P. And also looks really cool in my opinion. So the first thing we did was to apply this gasket around the edge of the enclosure so that it'll apply a seal when there's pressure between the screws and the deck and water can't get in. Next, we tried to loosely fit everything in there. The battery is actually so long that it almost doesn't fit with the ESCs inside, but we managed to squeeze everything in there after a little bit of playing around. We're going to be using two of the Falk boxes which are no longer available, so if you're planning on following this, just use a dual flip sky 6.6, it should fit just the same. Next, we drilled the holes for the phase wires to pass through. We drilled little 4mm holes, just the perfect size for the bullet connectors to go through, and we drilled four of them in a line for each of the three phase wires on each ESC, and then the sensor wire. We placed the phase wires through the holes in the enclosure, that way the Falk boxes would be lined up just against the edge of the enclosure, and we could get the most space inside of it. We've used electric conduit fittings in the past, but I think that this looks a lot nicer. We'll be sealing it with some silicone, that way water can't get in, as opposed to the conduit fitting. With everything fitted perfectly in, it was time to install some of the features such as the percentage indicator, the charge port, and the power switch. First, we velcroed down all of the components with the ESCs, that way they'd stay in place, and then we drilled holes for each of the components to go through, they were the perfect diameter for them. The fitting was so tight that it was difficult to find places for these components to fit, but we eventually got them to go right next to each other, and I think it ended up looking very clean and nice. As you can see from this shot, everything's in there pretty tightly, so we actually had to ditch our plan of installing a percentage indicator because there was no room for it. We then mounted the battery inside of the enclosure using this sticky double-sided adhesive and applying it all over the length of where the battery would go. Because we had to unplug all of the wires, we reprogrammed both VESCs and censored FOC mode. We then connected in our Bluetooth module and our VX2 receiver. Both of these were mounted into place with Velcro. We finally removed the other side of the adhesive from the double-sided tape and applied the battery into the enclosure. To seal everything off, we used a caulk gun and some silicone. We then used threaded insert nuts to mount the enclosure to the deck. The upgrade was then finished and the result was a much cleaner looking electric skateboard. The fishbone enclosure really applies a new element to the bottom side of this deck and I think that it looks a lot cooler now. It also just looks a lot neater and it'll hold everything in much better and sealed. 
The upgraded battery will also extend our range from about 16 miles to 20 miles. Again, this is riding really aggressively and on really steep hills because of where we live. We are really pleased about how this board turns out. I think that it looks absolutely amazing and this thing rides even newer than ever. The added range is also a huge bonus and helps us on our daily commutes. You can check out the video that we made originally detailing how to build this board to understand how we built the drivetrain and originally configured the electronics. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. The remainder of this video is just going to be some riding footage of us on this board. If you like this video, leave us a like and comment down below and subscribe to our channel for more eSkate content. Thanks once again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.